I was talking to a relative the other night about a staffing problem she's having on her team. Totally discopal problem. I was able to diagnose the underlying issue right away, which is not at all surprising. I mean, it really wasn't um, difficult to understand. Lady bosses with male subordinates have a, have a disc problem. They have a built-in disc problem because men will yield to the dominance of dominant males, but they will, generally speaking, they will not yield to the dominance of dominant females. Dominant females have to be um, exponentially more bossy, more strident, more um, rancorous even, more exacting in any case to get the compliance that they're looking for from their male subordinates for the simple reason that boys is boys and girls is girls. Mars has got arrows and he shoots them and Venus has got a vulva and she gets shot. Um, and it's unnatural as a matter of biology, as a matter of uh, paleopsychology, call it what you like, it's unnatural for human beings to have their social hierarchies arranged in such a way that the woman is in charge and the man is taking her orders. And so I knew that was the problem and I knew how to fix it in at, at least to palliate it, not necessarily correct it enduringly, but to palliate the problem, that's to give the guy more work. And she was really surprised that I knew that, but it's a DS problem. That's the, the, the battle of the sexes is a DS problem. And in its case, D means dominance and S means submission. Um, and to be masculine is to be in the naturally dominant role and to be a naturally dominant persona in a naturally submissive role is difficult to, for men to manage even when the boss is a man. But when the boss is a woman, it's essentially intolerable at the subconscious level. And this is, again, more of the same kind of silly shaling that we see associated with everything DISC that no matter what you say about your conscious beliefs and intentions, no matter what you say about what you plan to do, no matter um, what good initiatives you set in motion, nevertheless, your idealized universe, your disk profile, the thing that makes the universe of the real, of the existential, enduringly and persistently unsatisfying to you, that is working all the time. And for a man being bossed by a woman, it's being worked on that way. And so it's plausible that the problem can't be solved. She's convinced it can't be solved anyway, um, just because it's gone on too long, it's gone too far. And I think that's probably true, that there really is no way to fix this enduringly. Giving the man more to do will satisfy his D needs in such a way that his um, D deficit at being bossed around by a woman won't seem so nagging to him. If you picture this as a matrix of different values and reward the value in one way where you're um, taxing, penalizing it another way, you increase the rewards, you minimize the pain associated with the penalties and um, you make for happier people. And so if you've got a man in a role where he's forced to take orders from a woman, give him more orders to take, give him more to do, and um, reward his accomplishments accordingly. Reward the D in him. Regardless of where he is on the disc profile, his problem with a woman manager is a D problem, so give him more D rewards. But I... Plausibly, that won't work in this case, and in any case, I um, switched the conversation around to just having fun talking about firing people, which is something I can always have fun talking about. I've fired a lot of people in my life. I'm lucky enough now to have a job where I'm not obliged to fire anyone. I can't fire anyone anyway. All of my uh, putative employees are my relatives, and I can't fire them because it just makes family dinner so uncomfortable. But I have fired many, many, many people in my life, and I got better at it over the years, but I think I would be amazingly better at it now, and certainly I'm amazingly funnier at it now, and that was where this conversation went, was just me riffing on all of the different ways that I can fire people in the nicest possible way, to find the nicest possible way to put somebody out on the street and bid him farewell forever. So, 
let's talk in practical terms about how actually to fire people in the nicest possible way. And I can tell you how to do that. I can tell you how to do that in a, from a self-adorationist point of view, and I can also um, use DISC to inform the discussion. But the most important thing to understand is that if you have to fire someone, the person at fault is you. Not the person you're firing, the person at fault is you. And why are you at fault? Because you hired that person. Oh, I didn't hire him, I inherited him. You inherited him and didn't fire him, but you inherited him. You inherited him and didn't whip him into shape when you inherited him. You hired him and realized that you didn't make a mistake and you didn't do what was needful at the time to correct what was then a minor defect in your praxis. And the correction may have consisted of firing that person at the time, but the ideal way to fire a bad hire is on the first day or the first week or the first month, not months and years later. But it's entirely possible that as soon as you realize you had a problem, you could have gone to the person and said, you know, I know you're new and so you don't know the way we do things around here, but this is a problem, not just for me, not just as a matter of personal preference, this is a problem for the whole team. And so if you could do it this way from now on, it sounds so much like office space, if you could do your TTP forms this way from now on, that'd be great. But that really is the job of management, is to hire well, and that is the most important job of management, is to hire well, and that means hiring perfectly as far as I'm concerned. I was never any good at that. I might be better at it now. Using DISC, I think, I should hope I would be amazingly better at it, but I'm not being put to the test. But after that, once you've hired, the manager's job is to make the new hire work out one way or another, and that may mean by firing that person immediately, but making it work out, that's the boss's job. Not <laughs> setting some new employee bot in motion, winding him up and turning him loose and letting him wreak havoc on your organization for two months or six months or six years before you finally get around, get around to letting that person go. And then blaming him for the problem. It's not his fault. It is not his fault. If you let a bull in your china shop, it's your damn fault, you idiot. A bull is a bull. A dumbass is a dumbass. A psycho is a psycho. A lazy bastard is a lazy bastard. A slacker is a slacker. All of these things are knowable in advance. It's easily discernible. The uh, Sorting the, the definitely nots from the maybes is unbelievably easy in hiring. I have no idea how, many, how so many maybes get jobs. I can't go to a retail establishment without wanting to fire the manager. I don't want to fire anybody. I want to fire everybody, frankly, but I don't need to fire everybody. I just need to fire the manager. I fire the manager and I see who protests and then I fire that guy too. And as soon as I run out of protesters, I go to the rest of them and I say, okay, this is the way things are going to work from now on. You guys have been great so far. Loved what you've been doing so far, but we're going to do things differently from now on. And if you're not comfortable with the new way of doing things, I completely understand. I completely Change is hard. Change is difficult. I totally get it. If the changes aren't to your liking, that's totally cool. Come to me and talk about it, and we'll work out a peaceful separation. We will work out a mutually agreeable separation so that you can move on with your career and do what you want to do with your time. Enjoy your days. Enjoy your work days. Why wouldn't you dance at work? Why doesn't everybody dance at work? If you can't dance under the new management, I totally get it. Dance away. It's fine with me. That's a nice way of not firing people, just encouraging them to fire themselves, which is the ideal way to fire people, frankly, is to get them to quit, not to politic or maneuver them into quitting, but simply um, point out the reality of the situation and say, look, you jump or you're pushed. I'm not pushing yet, but I want you to know that pushing is an idea that I consider from time to time. I think it would be wise for you to get your resume out there in the marketplace. What? 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 I'm not looking for a job. Everybody's looking for a better job. Everybody is looking for a better job. Me too. Don't tell me you're not looking for a better job. I know you're looking for a better job. Everybody's always looking for a better job. That's the nature of having a job. <laughs> it's the job I have now is the leverage I'm going to use to get the job that I want next. I totally get that. I mean, I do it too. Everybody does it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's completely reasonable and rational. That's the right way for you to manage your career. I'm thinking that you maybe haven't approached this with the level of urgency that you should bring to it. And so I want you to know that you should be more motivated in pursuing other alternatives.
because I am open to considering alternatives to you. You're not firing anybody. You're just saying, <laughs> get the fuck out, asshole. Because I will have no problem escalating this to the next level. But it is the boss's problem. It is the boss's error, and it is the boss's job to fix this. And so if you have someone that you have to fire, you have to fire that person. And there is nothing but good that comes of this. Everyone hates this. Everyone dreads this. Everyone thinks it's some kind of evil, awful thing. No, to the contrary. It is good for everyone. It's good for you as a manager. It's good for your employer who is depending upon you to defend his interests. It's good for the rest of your team because they need to know that there are rules and standards by which they are expected to perform and that those standards are not infinitely elastic, that you can bend the rules a little and we'll laugh about it and have a talk about it, and you can bend the rules a lot and find another job. And it is beneficial to the employee that you're firing because that person is in the wrong job. And this is exactly the way to present it to the employee is to say, Barry, I am so sorry. I, this is entirely my fault. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate having to have this conversation. And I want you to know it's not you. It's me. This is entirely my fault. My job as a manager is to make the perfect hire, to find the perfect person for the position I'm trying to fill. And I'm sure I told you that in the interview process. And I also told you that it's not simply the case that I'm hiring you. You're hiring me, too. You're hiring my opportunity. You're hiring my workspace. You're hiring my compensation. You're hiring my environment. And you're hiring me as your manager. And I think I have let you down. First, because I wasn't discerning enough to realize that you weren't right in this position, that this wasn't the right, perfect job for you. And second, because I didn't respond quickly enough in order to help you find the job that you're really looking for. We know you're looking for it. We just agree that you're looking for it. I've been getting in your way by making things too comfortable for you. So I've been remiss in my duties to my own management by not pruning my team appropriately. I've been remiss with you by not diverting your efforts to where they can be more productive and more satisfying for you. I've been remiss in my management of my team by letting it run in a way that was weaker than it should have been. Every member of the team should make the team stronger, but the team should make every individual member of that team massively stronger. Five people on a team shouldn't do as much work as five people working individually. They should do as much as 10, as much as 20, as much as 100. But if you get, get the wrong person on the team, and it doesn't have to be dreadfully, outrageously wrong, just not the right fit for that organization, then the team does half as much as five individuals could do, or 10% as much. Each individual does half as much as what one individual could do alone, or less than that. The team underperforms and underperforms until it ceases to perform altogether, until the business goes bankrupt. You can't let that kind of minor problem persist, or it will become a major problem. So our getting a divorce as unpleasant as that might seem for you, for me, for the members of our team, for the rest of the company, as unpleasant as that might be, our, our getting a divorce is the best thing for everyone concerned. It's better for me, better for my management, better for the team, better for the company, but it's better for you. It's better for you. I haven't done as well as I could have or should have by you. I'm sorry for that. I'm very sorry. I try to do my best at work, and I, I didn't do as well for you as I should have. But I know what you have inside you. I know your potential. I know how much you can achieve. And I know how happy you can be and how happy you deserve to be at work. And that's why I'm giving you your freedom today, why I'm sending you out there into that harsh, cold, cruel world. I understand. I'm sending you out there without a paycheck. But I'm sending you out there to find the opportunity that you really deserve. 
the one that'll make you soar, the one that'll make you shine, the one that'll make you the star you were meant to be. I'm sorry that wasn't here. I'm sorry we weren't right for each other. But I have nothing but faith in your potential for greatness somewhere else. And yes, there is a degree of bullshit in that, but it's nevertheless fundamentally true. If you're not willing to take responsibility for yourself in every choice that you make, if you're always looking to blame someone or something outside yourself, you're never going to solve your problems. Not your business problems, not your personal problems, not your family problems, not any problems. And so the third step of this process is having fired my employee in the nicest possible way, I want to go talk to the rest of my team and I want to say, I had to make a hard choice today. I never like to do this. This is why I get paid the big bucks, but I still, I never like to do it. Every job you've ever had, some idiot has said to you, Jason, Blazin, Grayson, and Stacy is a family. We treat our people like family. This is false. We are not a family. We're a team. In a family, you can say the meanest things to people and they'll still tell you that, that, that they love you. You can come home drunk and break a bunch of dishes and you still got a marriage the next morning. You can do something that amounts to a complete betrayal and your parents are still there to bail you out of jail in the morning. That's what you have when you have a family. You don't have that here. We don't have the love of a family among us, but we do have the camaraderie and the shared purpose of a team. We are a team. And as a team, we need to make each other stronger. We need for each member of the team to make the whole team stronger, and we need for the team to make each one of those members better than he could ever be on his own, better than he could be in another team. And that means that when we recruit badly, when I recruit badly, we need to make changes. We need to make the team stronger by making changes. And that's what happened today. I made our team stronger, and I know that all of you will be happier. And in consequence, I know all of you will be more productive because we made our team healthier. We didn't have a death in the family. We had the surgical removal of an appendix. We had appendicitis on our team and we don't have it any longer. And we'll recover today and we'll recover over the next few days. And in two weeks, we'll be stronger than ever. We'll be a stronger, better, happier, more productive team together. I hope you're not unhappy about today's news. And I hope you see in the long run that you'll be much happier because we've made this change. I think this is responsible management. I think this is very disc aware management. When you're recruiting, you should be very disc aware. There's no reason in the world to put a cautious person on your sales team or an incandescent person in research and development. But if you manage that way, you deserve to go broke. You should be very disc wise when you're recruiting. And if you are very disc aware when you're recruiting, you should never have to fire anyone. But if you do, Consider your own responsibility in the matter and do it in the nicest possible way. This is the Church of Splendor. My name is Greg Swan. I'm so glad I get to talk to you. And we'll talk again next week.